your position is the sharpened the sharpened axe and your marketing is the swings that chop the tree down uh, so a lot of people focus on chopping the tree down by swinging the axe and they don't focus on getting the sharpest axe available welcome to the post purchase pro podcast this is the only podcast that dives deep into post purchase marketing to help amazon sellers increase sales ranking reviews and profits it's everything that happens after the initial sale that makes a difference we call this the back end. Hey, welcome back to the Post Purchase Podcast. In today's episode, Seth and I are going to be interviewing a longtime friend, Jason Flatland. Jason, thank you for showing up. Jason is co-founder of Rapper Crush, author of One to Many, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Very distinguished marketer. Now, Jason, forever synonymous, I should say, with the largest affiliate launch in history, reaching nearly $59 million in sales. And coincidentally, the author of the foreword in our new book, Private Label Millionaire Secrets. Thank you for that. We're so excited to have you here with us today, Jason. I'm ready to jam. <laughs> so, Seth, I know that uh, we've been trying to get Jason into the podcast to do this interview since, uh, I think, December. And uh, now here it is in March. Can't wait to get this thing produced and out there. So, Jason, as I understand, you know, we, we often talk about the, the $1,000 beer and all that kind of thing. But before all that, as I understand, you were a rapper, a monk. Uh, come from a one-bedroom apartment that you shared with your dad in BFE, Iowa. And now, here you are, world-famous webinar pitch man and king of affiliate marketing. Tell us, who the hell is Jason Flatley today? Well, this is a case where truth is stranger than fiction. All of those things are true. So, <laughs> I mean, what what I've always attempted to do since I started in business, uh, very humbly, of course, is to find an offer that was unbeatable put it in front of an audience that would get more benefit out of that than anything else that they could ever purchase or think to purchase and then win a customer. And then when you do that, you, you could just remarket to those customers more than trying to get new customers. So that's generally how business works. It's like an 80, 20, 20% you want to get new customers, but ultimately 80% of the time you want to serve existing customers, because if you give them a big win today, and then you ask them tomorrow or the next week or the next month or the next year for another thing where they could potentially win again, the, the likelihood of them saying yes to that is about a thousand times greater. And so that's kind of been the golden thread. When I started, I was writing articles for four bucks an hour uh, for search engine optimization purposes back in 2007. And then I started creating information products that were low ticket for, you know, like $4, $5 information products and then bigger products. And then I said, hey, I want to coach and train. So I figured that out, use webinars to do that. And then I'm like, well, they work well to train. Would they work well to sell? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. And so I've learned to do a lot with a little. Yeah, Jason. So you actually wrote the book, One to Many. It's not one to one. It is one sales message broadcast out to many people. So that means that you're touching a lot of different people at the same time, right? So I know that Sean and I talk about it every single day. But for you, Jason, where would you be without a customer list to uh, to reach out to? Uh, I would be on suicide watch because, I mean... <laughs> It's like you got to Here's the three things you got to do in business. You got to you got to have traffic. You got to have conversion. And then you had got to have fulfillment. Um, and so it's like if, if you're selling something, you already have the fulfillment. I assume I hope so, at least. Right. So you got a product. So then you either got to focus on conversion or traffic. Some people try to do both. But that's like riding two horses at once. You just can't do it. So then you got to kind of really pick your lane. Do I want to be a traffic expert or I want to be a conversion expert? Uh, I would rather be a conversion expert. So every time I had a new offer, I wouldn't have to go and hunt down and find a bunch of strangers to sell it to them. Instead, I could go to people who've already, uh, I've demonstrated my worth to, who I've spent a lot of time to understand uniquely. And so you could take everything else away from me as long as you give me my email list and I'll still sleep well at night. The, the email list is king. And you know what I love even more about this? It's 2022. It's the year of TikTok and Instagram and chatbot and whatever else. And I'm telling you, Email outperforms them all by a country mile. And so people think it's an old, your mother's kind of marketing media channel. Uh, and I hope they continue to think that way because then it makes those who do email even more effective at what they do. That's ridiculous that you said that because I those exact words that I stole from Gary Halbert in my presentation for Post Purchase Pro, I literally say, if you take everything away from me and drop me in the middle of a field in Iowa, coincidentally, <laughs> then I could write my way out of there with an email list and I can make yep. it rain cash. And, and we didn't have this conversation beforehand and your cat had no idea we were going to talk about it either. But an email <laughs> list, Jason, you know, when we entered the Amazon space, uh, Seth and I joined in 2014, shortly before I met you at one of the ASM events in Vegas, we put a huge amount of effort and a huge amount of, of, of trust and value in creating a relationship with our customers. I had no idea, brother, 
that other Amazon sellers weren't approaching that. But since I come from a background of direct response marketing, my business depended on the right. livelihood and survival of our business depended on creating a back end system. Today, we can allocate 41 cents on every dollar we've ever earned in our business has come from existing customers by way of what we now call post purchase marketing. So when did you, Jason of House Flatland, BFE, Iowa, I think it was Muscatine, That's when right. did you first realize the need to create a relationship with buyers instead of what we call hustling every day to create transactions? So I was really fortunate um, that it was instantaneous for me. So the first product I ever sold online uh, was like a $4 ebook on how to write uh, articles. So 400 word articles, uh, I had a process because I was writing them for clients. And I posted it on the Warrior Forum, which was at the time the biggest internet marketing forum that existed. Now, again, I'm dating myself here. It was in 2007. So there was no social media. I guess that was the first advent of social media was these old message boards and these old forums. And so you could run an uh, you could run an ad for 20 whopping dollars, and as long as you gave that form a special deal, a price that was unmatched anywhere else, that's that was the only uh, conditions. And so here's what happened: uh, I wrote a book, and it was only like six pages long, super short, and people liked that because they didn't have to go through a whole history lesson in order to get an answer to the question that they were looking at. I was like, hey, you want to write an article faster? Is what you do? Step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. There is no step four. Get out of here, you know. So people would buy the book, read it apply it immediately, come back to the thread, because it was like a sales letter posted on inside of a message board in, in a forum post, right? And they would write their results. And they would say, this was incredible. This was awesome. This worked really well for me. This is the first product I've ever bought, where it did what it said it was going to do, things like that. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Um, because the social proof, which I didn't even know was a thing back then, created more sales. But ultimately, it also created already the desire for people to say, what else you got? What else you got? Because they had a good experience with this. What else you got? I didn't have anything else. So I'm like, hold on a second. I'll go get something <laughs> else. I'll go figure something else out. Now, here's the smartest thing I ever did. Uh, on one hand, a lot of people make things overcomplicated. And so they get all worked up and then they get nothing done. Um, I try to simplify as much as possible. Back then, I didn't have the integration readily available. Most people don't to where when somebody bought like an info product off of you, uh, you'd automatically add them to an email list. So there was a way to take their PayPal receipt because we were running it through PayPal with their email address associated with that and automatically put it on an email list. That was too complicated for me at the time. So all I did is on the thank you page. I just said, hey, here's your product. Download it here. Step two, join my email list. If I ever update this product, I'll send you an update and I'll send you other stuff as well. Um, and so we had like, I, I say we, it was only me back then, uh, had like an 80% opt-in rate or a 90% opt-in rate to that, which was astronomical. Yeah. Uh, and, and now I had a list of about 2,000 some odd paying customers, not free bee seekers, but actual paying customers. And I had this momentum in place where so many of them had this goodwill that I was just like, I got to create another product for them. So I kind of just applied the same formula. What, what else do they need that's microscopic, not a big product, something I could write in a couple pages, sell it super duper cheap, but have a system that I could sell them. And I did that for the next year. So I created like 10 or 12 information products within the next year, sold them to the same list. And then I would just launch them on the forum. So I'd pick up a couple hundred new customers each time. And I mean, that guys is the basis of what ended up being over a half of a billion dollars sold in my career. Uh, but it all started from the fact that immediately I had that customer feedback and immediately I had customers joining an email list, even though it was a low rent way of doing it, it was better than nothing. And if I didn't make that decision to do that, you know, here, opt in here and get updates and other stuff, <laughs> I, I don't know like what effect that have on my marketing if it would just slow it down a lot, or it could have been the difference between me going back and doing something else because there was a lot of upfront work involved just to get that first purchase. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Jason, what um, I, I was uh, thinking through all of your history and all the businesses that you've started and you know, you've just gotten, you've got a lot of experience through your career because you started so early. So Jason, when you step into anybody's business and you're looking for growth or, or you're looking for the little, the big lever that makes the biggest change, right? What are the one or two things you're looking at to say, you got to get these one or two things nailed. Otherwise you're not going to grow like you should. Yeah. I mean, so positioning is the first thing I always look at, which is probably a little esoteric for most people listening here. But the idea is, you know, your position is the sharpened, the sharpened ax and your marketing is the swings that chop the tree down. Uh, so a lot of people focus on chopping the tree down by swinging the ax and they don't focus on getting the sharpest ax available. So we want a strong, solid position. And that position says, hey, to you, customer in the marketplace, I am made for you and you will not have anything more suited and, and perfect for your needs than what I have for you. Uh, it's kind of the, the there's two examples I get to this, how Apple 
they weren't for geeks. You know, Apple's a is a designer. Uh, it's a piece of designer gear masquerading as a computer. Uh, people use it to look cool in public, and it just so happens to get on the internet, right? Uh, at Tesla was the same thing. It wasn't just for the crunchy granola types who want to save the environment. It was for people who wanted to go faster than everybody else and look cool doing it. And oh, by the way, I guess maybe it helps the environment. Uh, so those are positioning elements. So if I'm looking at a business, uh, they either have a position that's undefined, that can be defined, or they have one that needs to be refined because it's there, but it's not quite there. So that's that's ultimately what I look for in any business. Because if it's a me too business, uh, it might work out for a while, but it's it should only be a transition into something more permanent if you don't have any differentiation. Now, the other thing that I look to is a competitive advantage. Um, so do we have something that is hard to copy, hard to duplicate, and easy to continue to magnify and exponentialize? And oftentimes, the, the advantage isn't necessarily some objective advantage. The advantage is, is knowledge where everybody else in the market has ignorance. And I'll give you two quick examples of that. One is it's con you know, in the webinar space, people think I did the webinar to the audience and I got all my buyers. We can run that same webinar to that same audience three months later and generally get about the same amount of buyers. And what's changed? Nothing's really changed except for in three months, a lot of people's lives change. So maybe they weren't a target in three months ago and now they are, or maybe three months ago, you put a message in their head that wouldn't quit. Uh, and they've been going to bed thinking about it every night for the last three months. So now when you make them the offer again three months later, I mean, they wanted it all along, but they ain't going to come looking for you. you got to come to them in those instances. And again, an email list is, is, is super important uh, for you in order to do that. And so we have found that very often people, business owners, underestimate the amount of times it takes for a customer to say yes to something, something that the customer wants, that the customer needs, that the customer is excited to buy. But for whatever reason, they haven't yet. And and if we make it easier for those things to happen, then those things generally occur. Wow. So, so much to unpack there. But, I mean, you got my juices flowing because you're talking about an opt-in page. So, right now, and you'll get a kick out of this, Jason. Um, my 14-year-old son took a break from school uh, this morning for a couple hours. He's like six foot five, 280 pounds. So, he's not a little guy. But he's literally upstairs right now. I can hear him doing his first podcast interview to promote the book that he's writing. Nice. <laughs> called uh, Overnight Success. So on his opt-in page, you'll get a kick out of this. Check out cashheart.com. That's my son's name, Cash. But on his opt-in page, he's giving you the first chapter for free to build his first email list. I couldn't be any prouder of him. So without an email list, Jason, just like you said, you can send the exact same message or do the same webinar to the same audience and get similar results. Well, back in 2008, 2009, when Seth was working in my marketing company as an intern while he was in college, we had a tiny, ugly, I mean, it was just, it was a very unremarkable, embarrassing, now looking back at it, postcard that went out to my customer list of warranty registration. 70,000 people on the list. Every single time we send the postcard, it'd do 450 to $500,000 in sales. I couldn't send the daggone postcard fast enough. I mean, I couldn't buy postage stamps fast enough. Every time we send it out, it produced similar results. So, Jason, do you agree then? I know the answer before I ask it. It's like a good attorney that without a customer list, that you're waking up every single morning unemployed, praying that you're going to create another transaction. You agree? Yeah, I mean, okay. So the way I would look at it is this, right? Uh, you could have a well-stocked pantry, so that way you know you're going to your next meal's there. Or you could go out in the Sahara and try to hunt and kill every single day when you wake up in the morning. Not having an email list is like saying, well, I hope I don't starve before the day ends. Uh, having an email list is okay. Maybe we don't eat filet mignon every day, but at least we're eating something every single day. And there's a lot of other things you got to take care of in business. So having that be one less thing that will preoccupy your time most of the time, uh, I think that's so important. But here's something else psychologically that I think a lot of people miss. Um, if I'm having a conversation with my audience, say on Facebook, and one of these other social media platforms, of which none of them that I'm on, uh, I'm on none of them, I don't use any of them really, uh, it's, it's like having a conversation in a loud nightclub. Um, so it's like your message is not going to be heard. And even if it's heard, uh, if it's an important kind of personal message, the nightclub is not the place to do it. And so a lot of social media is these loud, noisy nightclubs where everybody's on drugs and they can't even see each other. And they're not there to uh, they're there to be entertained. They're not there to be uh, empowered. But now, the email inbox, on the other hand, is a more private area. It is a more sacred space. Uh, they kind of allow who they uh, want into that email inbox. They usually have relationships with the people that are in those email inboxes, especially the ones that the way that we develop them. And they are there specifically not for entertainment, but for empowerment or for insight. 
And so not only is it a function that we don't have to hunt and kill to eat every single day, which is nice, but also it is the most powerful way of communication with a customer because it's you and them. It's not having a conversation in a loud, noisy nightclub. It's like, hey, let's go get a cup of coffee and sit down and talk about things. So even the same person in two different situations is going to have two different responses. So all these marketers out here that are working their tail off on social media, even if they're good at it, the types of, of interactions there are limited by the context. So in those instances, I always tell them, and they always think I'm an idiot, Sean, when I tell them this, I said the primary function of social media is to get them on an email list. Wow, I never thought about it like that, but that's ridiculous. So the primary function of selling a physical product on Amazon is get to on leverage email. the relationship to grow your business. So we view Amazon, Jason, and you'll love this, as a profitable customer acquisition channel, not a transaction machine. It's a yeah. way to grow an email list. And, you know, I was, we could talk about this stuff for hours and hours and, you know, we'll go into the whole thing of, I'd love to have you back. I know you'll be back sometime in the next 24 months, but let's get down to some nitty gritty here. All right. There's, sure. there's another reason why I wanted you on here. So you wrote the book on the secrets of webinar success, one to many, which is what I found to be the fastest way to monetize any customer list. And we've literally made tens of millions of dollars using your strategy. So Jason, I've been giving this to everyone I know. And for today, for your listeners of this podcast, anyone watching this video, I want to buy you a copy of Jason's book. And uh, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to go to postpurchasepro.com slash Jason. And once you purchase your book on Amazon, send us a copy of the receipt. And we're going to either send you by Zelle or uh, Apple Pay 100% of your money back. And the reason I want to do that is because the book has been transformational, Jason. My son is upstairs using the exact same strategies that I learned in your book. So Honestly, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Russell Brunson because I love me some Russell Brunson. Believe me, Russell Brunson, Jason, created an itch in me with expert secrets. But your book finally scratched that itch. It was like Jason gave me a recipe, but you gave me the entire cookbook. And I actually have a uh, signed version right here where you claim that I am your older, uh, quote, brother from another mother. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that because this is one of my prized possessions. It only goes over here on the autograph side. So <laughs> postpurchasepro.com slash Jason. Go buy the book. OK, send us a copy of your receipt there and we will reimburse you 100 percent of the purchase price. I can't thank you enough for putting out that valuable information, Jason. It has been instrumental in the success of what we do every single day, Seth and I and every business that we've grown. And obviously, we're going to try our best to twist your arm, get you come on here with your cat again. But, you know, uh, uh, before we before we leave, we always like to end. And I kind of got this from somewhere else. But being where you're at today. You know, and what I know about you, a couple of things I want to know. Number one, your favorite business book and your favorite purchase that you splurged on. <laughs> my favorite purchase. I just, okay. So my favorite business book is Positioning by Al Rees and Jack Trout, um, Positioning the Battle for Your Mind. And that's where I really, truly learned about strategic posi uh, positioning, kind of what I talked about here today. So when I think of any business or any offer, whether it's on a macro or micro level, I go through some of the lessons in there in my mind and, and run it through. Uh, best splurge. Uh, so I, here's a good, I hear this one is very appropriate for this conversation. So a friend of mine uh, who was pretty high up at like JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs here in Pasadena, which kind of deals with all the NASA and all the space stuff out there, calls me up one day and he says, I am uh, I'm having a very private kind of invitation set up with Jeff Bezos is going to be there as the guest of honor because it was a, in the space category. They were honoring a space person of the year or something in space. I can't remember what, right? <laughs> and he says, it's going to be a small room. There's probably going to be like 75 people in there, maybe less. Um, would you like to come? Because it's a customer of mine that I've helped uh, throughout the years. I said, yes. And he says, now is this a suit and tie affair? <laughs> like, you know, because I usually don't show up looking the cleanest in the room, uh, at least that, not at that time. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So I, I live in, in Los Angeles now, not in Los Angeles, kind of on the, the, the outskirts of it. But I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go down there and get a nice suit. And I don't know how to shop at the time. I knew nothing, I don't own a, I didn't own a single piece of designer, none of that stuff, right? Uh, but I knew the Jay-Z song about Tom Ford. So I'm walking down Rodeo Drive and I see Tom Ford, I go, okay, I'm gonna go in there. I have no idea what the cost of any of this stuff is. They put me in this suit, I look like a million bucks. I feel like a million bucks. So I just go ahead and buy it. Uh, and it was a $10,000 suit. <laughs> Wow. Well, congratulations. But there's nothing like tailor fitted suits, right? Like, in fact, your your business partner, Wilson Mathos, we were in China in 2017 and I introduced him to his very first tailor who measured him from head to toe and built him a custom made suit. And uh, he was like, wow, you know, it's like I opened the door for him now. I bet he'll never wear one off the rack again, will he? And, and I, yeah, I won't either. And, and, and frankly, there's like 
mo most everything I wear now is tailored. And I learned a valuable lesson that day that people do judge books by their covers as, as a marketing expert, I should know that. Uh, but, it, you know, I had a blind spot there. So that silly little capricious moment of me saying, I got to look nice. I randomly pick a store based on some wrapper uh, and then buy a suit without looking at a price tag, which I never really do anyway. But, it, you know, it shocked me. But at the same time, it delighted me. And then I go there and everybody like my friends and stuff, when they see me in it, they're like, they just they treat me different. And it's amazing. And so, you know, from then I've, I've expanded. Oh, my <laughs> What's that? I told Seth I'm trying to get him to my tailor in Indiana that I used to use before I moved. Yeah. So he's going to yep. he's going to feel a lot differently. So it, it, de it definitely makes a difference. And so now I've, I've kind of expanded my repertoire and my attire a little bit more since then. But that, you know, all of that was was because I might on the off chance get to exchange a few words with Jeff Bezos. That's where that all originated from. I love it, man. Thank you. It's a wonderful story. So, um, Seth, go ahead. Yeah, Jason. So wrapping up here, where can people people find out more about you and then also your uh, amazing program, which basically makes affiliate marketing, um, gives it a big easy button, Rapid Crush Insiders. Where where can people go? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I know because we just pivoted it. Uh, Will probably has a place where Rapid Crush Insiders, you could join us. Uh, it's affiliate focused kind of, but it's also, you know, we're looking for a couple hundred insiders who want to build a long-term business, not kind of the flash in the pan tactical stuff that a lot of uh, internet marketing is predicated around, uh, really though, the very best thing they can do is go buy that book that Sean's going to pay for, for you. And then that will open the door to us having a relationship. You'll see in that book, by the way, the, the very smart ways in which I invite you to get on an email list. Because if I wasn't uh, building an email list off that book, I don't think I ever would have wrote it. So that's what I'd recommend that they go get. Great. That's a great start. So um, definitely comes with my highest recommendation. I already have it in the screen over here, The Battle for Your Mind, uh, Positioning by Adam Oh, you Rose. have the book, yeah. That. Yeah, it's sitting here. I'm ready to push the go button. But uh, before I do, I want to remind you, if you're listening to this or watching this, it's only for the first 100. If you go to postpurchasepro.com slash Jason, send us a receipt for your Amazon purchase and we'll reimburse you 100%. Jason, don't go anywhere, but thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us here. I think folks are going to get tremendous value out of this, man. I really appreciate you. You as well.